The last house on the left. The Hills Have Eyes. Swamp Thing, which was a DC comic adaptation. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Deadly Friend. Shocker. The People Under the Stairs. New Nightmare. Scream, along with its sequels. The Drama Music of the Heart. Cursed. The Suspense Thriller. Red Eye. And of course, My Soul to Take. What do these films have in common? They were written and directed by one of the most famous and legendary horror directors of all time, Wes Craven. Which, sad to say, he just recently passed away at the age of 76 due to battling brain cancer. And yeah, I heard the news recently and I was heartbroken completely. It got me right there because not only because he was one of my favorite horror directors of all time, but he directed several of my favorite films such as A Nightmare on Elm Street, Deadly Friend, Shocker, uh, The People Under the Stairs, New Nightmare, and and even, of course, the, the Scream films that I really enjoy. But I'm going to get to A Nightmare on Elm Street because that was a film. I think I started seeing that film since I was a little kid. And I remember this completely. A movie about what was it like if a serial killer that you haven't met or have known uh, after, hearing about, uh, after hearing about it on the news or some sort because he was basically what he was a serial killer who wants to be burned by a group of people uh, from a town and suddenly uh, from from a street called Elm Street and he wants up um, unbaiting other teenagers dreams and killing them one by one yeah and he was brilliantly play and yes, and he was a monster too. He was played brilliantly by Robert England. Yeah, and I know originally um, Wes Craven had wrote the character as simply a child molester because he basically molests children. Yeah, of course, killing them as well. Yeah, but I I know they he had to change that from the script because of you know why. And I'm not going to get to that. But it's it's basically one of those movies where you think, uh, what was it like if, if we actually have nightmares of the same person and suddenly you can't wake up at all because you know what's going to happen next. Yeah. It just makes you not want to go to sleep at all. I mean, who couldn't forget the scenes in A Nightmare on Elm Street where you saw you know, Johnny Depp's character actually... Um, being sucked in from his bed and wants up being overflowed gushing of blood that's coming that's over and then suddenly you see a gusher of blood that's overflowing from the bed yeah all the way on top of the roof uh, of his room yes that was a very awesome special effect that they used for this film or even the scene where where um, Freddy Krueger actually uh, shows his uh, glove you know, filled with claws around that's going straight inside uh, Nancy's uh, bathtub yeah already ready to uh, claw her out yeah or of course the scene where you started seeing the the image of Freddy Krueger actually popping out um, at her bedroom yeah oh wow I mean that that was without a doubt one of the most scariest horror films that Wes Craven has ever wrote and direct and it still gets to me today yeah and but my second favorite uh, after Nightmare on Elm Street was indeed Deadly Friend and that was a movie with uh, Chrissy Swanson yeah who was at the time a very young actress who just came from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off she played the girl next door who happens to be best friends with a genius named Paul and 
And he also has uh, his best friend, uh, who's a paper boy named Tom, yeah, nicknamed Slime. Yeah, he created his own robot known as BB. Yeah, who was actually voiced by Charles Fletcher. Yeah, he went on to do the voice of Roger Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, it was a movie where suddenly, uh, you know, it, it was a movie when Samantha winds up getting abused and killed by her father, and then suddenly she comes back to life once they put in the, his robot BB's chip inside her brain, and that's when her life had restored, only now she's becoming more deadlier than ever, and she actually gets her revenge on two people, yeah, her father and Elvira Parker, yeah, the old hack uh, next door, who wants up stealing uh, their basketball and as well as uh, killing BB the robot with, with a shotgun. Yeah, and who couldn't forget that moment when Samantha actually took the basketball and threw it right straight into her head and explodes you know so she's missing the head and dies yeah that that was a really uh, shocking but very uh, awesome special effect that I ever saw hard to believe that Wes Craven actually came up with that idea because who would have thought a movie like this can can actually uh, be accepted today <laughs> yeah Actually, they would never make that scene today unless they use CGI and all this other crap to to make it up for it. But they really did use practical effects for that scene alone. Oh man, I I just never forget that scene. But of course, Shocker was another favorite of mine too. You know, about a, a serial killer who wants up uh, being sentenced. To the death penalty, and and he started using the, and then he wants to be using a lot of shocking uh, electronic, and he started using a lot of shocking electronic devices, uh, yeah, such as the TV. So that means he, once he, once he gets uh, electrocuted by, so once he gets electrocuted, he wants to be baiting other people's. Uh, electronics and actually killing them yeah that means he can, he can even evade all the TVs out there <laughs> yeah just like how Freddy Krueger invades uh, teenagers dreams yeah it's a very underrated film if you ask me yeah. and then all the other films that I really enjoyed too um, although he did have its weakness at times yeah I mean, my sole to take was his worst film, and I didn't care for Curse either, and I didn't think Music of the Heart wasn't that great either as a drama, but despite the fact that it had some good actors like Melanie St Meryl Streep and Angela Bassett, it even has Gloria Stefan in the film too, but it had one of the worst songs, but it had one of the worst title songs I've ever heard, um, yeah, I know, because not only did you know, because I love Gloria S. S I like Gloria Stefan, you know, as a singer, and I still do, because she's also part of the Miami Sound Band, Miami Sound Machine, with uh, her husband uh, Emilio Stefan. But that song was a duet with those stupid boy bands in Stink. Yep. Okay, but I don't want to get to that now. But anyway, uh. But yes, uh, those were my favorite films that he did, and I really did love um, Scream. There's no doubt about it. Scream was another favorite of mine too. It was a movie that pretty much got the idea of what was it like if if everybody, you know, whenever it's guys or gals, they always they're always like huge fans of horror movies, and they love to talk about it all the time. That that whenever they see a horror movie, they always explain all the cliches and everything that they use in the film because you know exactly what happens until suddenly we wind up meeting a stalker who's dressed up as a ghost yeah and that ghost costume that he has 
almost look like the the Grim Reaper at, in some points. He just goes around bringing a knife and he and he starts killing everybody. Whenever he starts making a phone call to all the uh, all the horror fans out there, yeah, that was awesome. I really loved that movie. Um, I even loved the second one and the third one as well. Uh, the fourth one was a disappointment, but that's okay. Still, uh, I, I I just really miss him so much. I, I just. I just want to cry. I I I just. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I'm just gonna end it at the. Uh, I'm just gonna end the video right now because I'm already starting to, f to burst into tears already. But. To so all horror fans out there and movie buffs, I'm really gonna miss Wes Craven. You're a brilliant filmmaker. I love all your work. <laughs> and thank you for everybody who really enjoy your all your films. I mean, I love Freddy Krueger. I, I love um, all the rest of, of, of the characters that I grew up with. <laughs> Thank you. I just can't believe he's gone. <laughs> Forgive me, guys. I, I'm really sorry. I, I don't usually cry this much. But, especially on this video. But, now you know how I felt when you lose someone. You just, you just feel like, you know, the whole world is disappearing right in front of your eyes. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to, uh, you know, I'll try to do some more movie reviews. I'm, I'm not going to do too many for right now because I'm going to be busy with a lot of work. I'm, I'm going back to class now. And <laughs> I'm just hoping that things will turn out for the better. So, uh, with that aside... I'm really gonna miss Wes Craven. I mean, he was a great guy, a brilliant director, and you know, it's just sad that this had to happen. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.